FND Hope is a nonprofit patient advocacy organization for functional neurological disorder. And today we have Dr. Mark Edwards. He is a senior lecturer at the Sabel Department of Motor Neuroscience and Movement Disorders at UCL Institute of Neurology. He has also practices medicine at the National Hospital of Neurology in London. And we'll get started with our first question. Um, one of the common features of a functional neurological disorder is that at the onset, the onset happens suddenly. Um, however, many have learned that the more that they get to know about um, FND and the symptoms, they find that they have actually had symptoms for several years prior, which they had ignored. Do you think that changes anything knowing it, it was not as sudden um, as originally thought at the onset? that they've actually had symptoms prior to everything. Sure. I, I think it's I, I think that's what's behind having enough time, which is often difficult, uh, to be honest, in a in a in a sort of typical neurology consultation. It's about having enough time to, to talk to somebody and really get into the symptoms they've had in the past and think about whether those are relevant or not. And, and I think there's two ways in which they're relevant. One is that there's an association with people who've had more typical physical illnesses um, and then getting functional symptoms. So, for example, there's quite a lot of people with typical epilepsy who then go on to get non-epileptic or sort of functional epileptic type attacks. Um, so that's sometimes where, it, where people might have had quite a lot of symptoms in the past and then have developed functional symptoms. And then obviously there are people who've, who've had functional symptoms over time, but they've never been diagnosed. Um, and that's maybe a bit more common. And there is some evidence to suggest that if your functional symptoms are diagnosed earlier um, and that you can you know, uh, get advice and treatment about them, then they might not go on to become so much of a problem. So that's a good reason for, for trying to make a, a good diagnosis, I suppose, as early as possible. One of the suggestions, as I guess, is to not pay attention to these symptoms because oh. actually giving them the attention that they're kind of, I guess, seeking then only seems to exacerbate the problem. So oh. my, my kind of conundrum there is that if you've had these symptoms that you did ignore, mm. that you sat and put off, which theoretically is exactly what we are then told to do. Oh. Yet they escalated. So I, you see how, and I could see how even as a doctor, it's kind of like, well, which one do we? Well, I think, I think that the, it's a very good question, actually, because I think this advice about, oh, you should just ignore these symptoms, it's not quite right. Um, because I think that if, you're, if you've got symptoms and you don't know what the cause is, and the symptoms are quite significant, and you're, you're worried about them, uh, and somebody's telling you, don't worry about them, but not really giving you an explanation of what the symptoms are all about, then that's not really going to work very well. And even if you try and you know, not worry about it, you're going to be thinking, well, you know, what are these symptoms due to? Could that be, you know, do I need to have more tests about this? Um, you know, could it be this or that? Um, and that's not a very helpful situation. But if you actually know that the symptoms are, these are functional symptoms, this is a real thing that people know about, or at least know a bit about, um, then that can be a, a, a better route to be able to actually, um, you know, think about the symptoms in the right way. Do you see what I mean? I'm not sure whether I express that very well, but... Um, I, I do. I, I don't know if it answers... I guess it still kind of leaves that hanging, which is what I think, unfortunately, with this disorder, a lot of things sit to kind of hang in that limbo of mm. still going back yeah. to, like, the, well, not thinking about... Cause, and that's where I think it comes into the... Um, then you only finally see it when it's become a huge problem because I can ignore the fact that I, you know, um, I'm trying to think of some of the symptoms that people have had, yeah. you know, some of the stomach problems maybe, or maybe yeah. they had some movement um, problems periodically, not enough to get their attention, not enough to cause concern, which is why they didn't go to a doctor. Yeah. But yet all of a sudden one night, they're having seizure-like activity, well, that, of course, is caused to go, oh, I've never had a seizure before. I should go to the doctor. Yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're, you're right. That, that, that I suppose if, if the severity of symptoms is, 
is not enough for um, for somebody to think that they should go and see a doctor. That then probably it is the right advice to, you know, um, not necessarily pay a huge amount of attention to them. I suppose um, that's that's a difficult situation really to give advice on. But I think obviously when you've got something which is a, a significant symptom, then you have to seek advice about it. I suppose the, the, what I'm really thinking about is a situation where somebody's had significant symptoms that's been enough to take them to the doctor for something you know, they're worried about, and the doctor's just said, well, you know, don't worry about it, um, without giving an explanation about what's going on. And that's a situation which doesn't work, in my opinion. Correct. Because it's, the, the person's just going to say, well, what the hell's wrong with me then? Exactly. Uh, so that's where, you know, simple, if you like, uh, kind of paternalistic reassurance saying, there, there, don't worry about it. Um, that, that doesn't really, doesn't really cut it for, for that situation. Well, and I think that's probably, you know, I have to say that's one of the words I have learned to hate the most is reassuring. Because <laughs> you're right, it's not very reassuring whether even when you, and I, and I think maybe there's a misinterpretation that is the patient is not reassured but when you're having symptoms like you can't walk you yeah. can be reassured and it's like well that's fine whatever it's in my mind it's whatever I don't even care at this point I just want to walk that yeah. that reassurance isn't reassuring do you get where I'm kind of saying that that until the only thing that will be reassuring is for the symptom to go away yeah no I think I think that that uh, I'm sort of want to maybe give people some some sort of information about it, what it's like from the other side, from the doctor's perspective in some ways, because I think that the reason why uh, some doctors find it quite difficult, um, find um, helping people with these symptoms quite difficult, is that all of the normal things that they would do don't really work very well. So in a more normal situation that people are more used to dealing with, you know, you do some tests, um, and if the tests are okay, that's the answer, you know, that, that means that there's, that there's nothing wrong. Um, whereas in this situation, the tests are okay, but there is something wrong. Um, somebody's got functional neurological symptoms. Um, so I think people have difficulty, kind of doctors have difficulty getting over that hurdle that what to say when all the tests are normal. Right. Uh, so uh, I think that's one reason why people can, you know, what, what the doctor's saying when they're saying, you know, it's, it's all fine, is that they're saying, well, you know, we've done these tests which exclude a, a sort of, you know, a life-threatening disease, if you exactly. like. Exactly. Um, but that doesn't really answer the question, which is, what's wrong with me and how am I going to get better? Um, uh, and that's, that's obviously a much more difficult question, and one to which there's not always a good answer with functional symptoms, but, um, uh, uh, yeah.